What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show. Today is Sunday, January 17th, 2021, episode 43. First episode with a guest in 2021. What better guest to have than my man, Tyler Casagrande. I haven't talked to you in a minute, dude, but uh, everything going well? Yes, sir. Big Mike. Mike Meatball Mar. What's good, brother? Good to dude, see you. Dude, I actually have that in the outline. That was going to be at the end of the outline, but hell, dude, we can kick it off with that. So uh, how do we, I mean, we met through Kevin back in the day but dude I, I was like sixth or seventh grade right yeah it was through kevin mehage back in i think sixth or seventh grade middle school me you kev dom rubino we would always kick it but we were uh we were at mehage's house one night and miss mehage made us some uh spaghetti and meatballs and she had these these big jumbo meatballs from wegman's and Big Mike thought he could stuff one down his throat one bite and didn't end up well. Dude, that video, I would pay so much money to watch that video. It's somewhere in the cloud. I mean, I don't know I, who has I it. lost I lost it when I got a new phone, but I've yeah. tried to look for that video for the last eight years and I don't have it. I hope I hope someone does. We need to rekindle that. I, I joined in the cloud somewhere. I had it on my four, but like you said, when I got my when I went from like the four to the five, like six years ago, I lost everything. And I feel like you you couldn't back up stuff back then. Like if you yeah, lost it, yeah. it's gone. Like there's no getting that yeah. photo back or video. <laughs> but one video that I actually was able to get my hands on, like probably a year ago, but it's from like that same time frame, is um you remember Andrew Shanley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were Andrew, Ethan, and I, before football practice, one day in middle school, we were all boxing in my basement, and Shanley got knocked out by Ethan Ty. Yeah, I'll send it to you after this, but like straight up unconscious in my basement and I have it on video and we're like screaming in our high pitched voices. I'm like, dude, he's dead. He's dead. And uh, <laughs> dude, it was iconic. But uh, yeah, shout out. Shout out uh, Miss Mihich for them supersized uh, women meatballs. I mean, supersized women meatballs. Yeah. There I mean, go. they hit. I mean, let's not get yeah, a mistake. Nothing, they're pretty damn like good. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty solid. But um, <laughs> all right, let's let's waste no time. We'll start with uh, you want to start with your baseball career. I got some questions related to that. All right, so yeah, you wanna you wanna fire him away? Yeah, I got you. So, um, what schools were interested in you or like offered you when you were in high school? So, I mean, I committed pretty early. I was like 15 at the time, so freshman year of high school. So, it was just kind of pretty early. So, it was like the the Virginia, Virginia Tech, uh, East Carolina, um, North Carolina, NC State. Yeah, and I had like Florida, Notre Dame, Clemson. And Damn. then I went on like a West Coast, West options. Coast circuit. It was always my dream to go to Arizona. Um, really? My dad actually took me to the College World Series in 2012 when Arizona won the national championship. So it had been my dream school. So I went out to uh, Phoenix to play in this tournament with the national team. And uh, I just started getting seen by all the West Coast schools like USC, UCLA, Arizona State, Arizona. So I went to ASU and then U of A. And when I came here for my visit, I fell in love with it. So I just committed on the spot. So, I mean, I'm sure I would have talked to some more schools, but like I said, I was 15. So, those are like the main schools. I was kind of choosing between Arizona, Florida, Virginia, Clemson uh, right before I committed. But, it, I mean, it wasn't really yeah. that much of a decision for me. Did you tour? Like, how many schools did you actually tour? Dude, I went to a lot. Um, I mean, I went on like a North Carolina kind of like circuit. I went to Duke, UNC, NC State, Wake Forest, uh, East Carolina. Um I toured Virginia, Virginia Tech. Um, and then, like I said, I went out to the West Coast fall of my freshman year. And then once I saw the West Coast, I was like, I want to end up living here one day. So I might as well come out here for college, just get a different yeah. feel. I feel like everyone that's good from our area, you know, goes to UVA, which is great. I mean, they're a great program, um, but I kind of want to do something different. So, yeah, you want to send it across the country. I just send it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it though. Now, um, Obviously, you said you wanted like there was not really like it wasn't much of a choice to go to Arizona. But looking back at it, let's say you didn't go to Arizona, which school like stood out to you the the most or the second most? Um, I mean Clemson's dope just because it's football. Like, yeah, I've been to Clemson um, too. I love the I love the school. Their facilities are top notch. Um, it was kind of like too isolated for me. I mean, it's in the middle of South Carolina, like here, yeah. um, an hour away from Scottsdale, four hours across from Southern California. So like pretty close like west coast pod but um i mean clemson was cool uh i like north carolina but like i don't i mean it's just it's so different it's so different out here none of them really compare like once i saw asu i was like this is my top choice and then i went down to U of A. I was yeah like, this is 
way more of my this top better. choice. Like, but yeah. Now, um, as far as like the, the guys on your team, are you um, like how many are from the East Coast? None. I mean, nice. I think the I think the closest to me is on our team right now. We have a kid from Texas uh, and a kid from Ohio, but other than that, it's mainly. In Southern state California guys. kids, Southern California kids, got a decent amount of Arizona kids, and then like a lot of Hawaii and uh, Las Vegas, good True. baseball cities. So nice. And you didn't redshirt, right? Like you started playing right away. Yeah, I played. So we played 56 games a season. So my freshman year, I played in 31. Um, and we had some pretty good guys. Like we had a couple top three rounders my freshman year. And then last year, I was playing a lot, but our season got cut short of COVID. Um, yeah, and then my my best friend on the team last year was the first round of the Yankees. So I remember lost, that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost a few key like, guys last year, but um, it should be a good year. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. You getting any uh any looks from uh, MLB MLB organizations? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to go too into detail on that. Just, just yeah, we'll give uh, a little key for the Michael Mars show. You know, give us <laughs> give us something though. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just we kidding. get like uh, we do like stuff like this, like. Usually they're in-person meetings, like uh-huh. MLB scouts will come to our field and we'll meet one-on-one with them. But right now it's all over Zoom, just like this, unfortunately. But I mean, they just go over like the basics and then they'll ask like more in detail questions from like your family life, like who are your three closest friends? What are their values? Like, do you read books? Like, I mean, they'll go like, how would you spend like your first a million dollars? Like they want to, I mean, they're investing a lot of money in you, so they want to know how you'll handle it. But yeah, yeah I mean... I'm a junior in school now, but sophomore for baseball because of COVID last year. But this is my draft year, so I can get drafted for the next three years. But That's hopefully, looking to get drafted this year. So, did your uh, your buddy? He got drafted. Was it the Yankees? Yeah, so he went 20th overall to the Yankees. Um, <laughs> That's sick. insane. That's yeah, so I mean, sick, like, dude. If you're a kid growing up, like, I mean, Yankees, Red Sox, like, those are the two teams everyone knows. Two so dynasties, it was pretty yeah. cool. Like, I was, I was, he's from Las Vegas, so I was in Vegas for the draft um he's one of my close buddies but i mean when he was getting calls from his agent he's with boris scott boris i mean everyone knows who that is but he was getting mm-hmm. blown up like probably starting at pick 15 and his agent was like yeah like this team wants you at pick 20 this team pick wants you at 22 this team wants you at 24 and if you land and you're still on the board at 28 like the yankees are taking you what do you want to do um i mean this is personal information for him i won't go too into detail but yeah, like, of course. pretty much was just like let's wait it out. Like I want to be a Yankee. So it's pretty dope. Just like hearing that. Like, yeah, dude, that's I mean, so he was, get, he was getting offered like a lot of money, like a couple million bucks in each pick. And he was like, nah, let's wait it out. Like, I want to be a Yankee. So yeah, that's so hype, man. Um, all right. Uh, another question that I have is just <clears throat> tell everyone like what a normal day is like for you at Zona in season. Uh, it's a grind, dude. I mean, it's fun, but, uh, usually, I mean, I'm up pretty early every day at about 5, 6 a.m. Usually we'll work out in the morning um, and then I'll have class from 8 a.m. to noon. We have to get all our classes out of the way in the morning just because we have practice. Mm-hmm. So we'll go to practice at 2, usually three to four hour practices. So I'll be at the field till about 5 or 6 at night. And then, I mean, after like workouts, practice, class like we'll have meetings uh you know we get hooked up with tutors and study halls so then i go home and do homework so it's a pretty jam-packed day but like living the dream so i'm not complaining yeah now how's the food at zone are they feeding you well yeah it's we have this uh it's like an athlete kitchen it's called bear down kitchen bdk um Uh so we get breakfast and lunch and then we have this thing called red card where they'll put like 10 different restaurants in, in tucson here in arizona or we get dinner for free. So like we get, we get pretty much every meal for free. So we get hooked up. It's nice. That's hype. Yeah, yeah dude. I, I check it on your stories sometimes when you post about it, dude, buddy looks like he's eating pretty damn well. <laughs> I, buddy looks like he's eating well. It's been tough with COVID just cause like for the first couple months, like our, our kitchen was shut down. So they implemented that. Uh, it's like an app on our phone. It's called red card. So we get to go to like some restaurants and eat for free, but uh, everything's kind of settled down a little bit. So we're back in, in the athlete kitchen, but yeah, we get fed well. Yeah. So do they put you on like a, like, not like put you on a diet or something, but like, do they tell you like, Hey, you need to intake this many calories throughout the week or something like that? Or like throughout the day, like, like how do they monitor? Yeah. The athletes? yeah I mean, it's fun. I'm just laughing. Cause like, I mean, there'll, be, there'll be some dudes on our team. If, if you're overweight and you come in, like you, you get your workout in and they're like, here's a banana. Like, this is all you're eating for the, rest yeah, of the day. Like, get, but he's got to lose some get, pounds. You get your banana. But I mean, I came in like, I mean, I'm not tall. So I came in at like, a buck 70 so for me it was just like about gaining weight 
I mean, mm-hmm. I probably put on like 30 pounds since I've been here. So we have a nutritionist. So like, yeah, he, he on an individual basis, like based on like your, your body type, like your height, your weight, et cetera, like you'll be put on, I mean, you could say a diet, but like, we're all getting fed the same foods, but like if a dude's overweight, they're not, they're not afraid to tell you. Yeah. I mean, as they should, I mean, when you're playing yeah. D1 sports, I feel like there's a lot of money and time that's invested into yeah, everything. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's not not terribly surprising. Um, now, just before I jump on to um, uh, like one of the other baseball questions, I just want to go back. What uh, stadium have you played in that like really stood out to you that isn't Arizona's? Um, last year, we played at uh, University of Texas. There were uh, there were six in the country. We went in there, and we beat them eight six. It was a Tuesday night, but dude, that stadium was unreal. Like there, I don't know if you know Troy Tulowitzki, the old Rocky shortstop. And then uh, Houston Street, he, Houston Street, he pitched for the Astros. So like two big leaguers for 20 years, both Hall of Famers, like we're on their coaching staff. So like Damn. we're taking, we're taking pregame batting practice and like Troy Tulowitzki's coming up to us saying what's up. And like, mm-hmm. I mean, everyone knows Texas sports, like you go down to Austin and like they don't have pro team. So they're just, they're all bought in on Texas sports. We went there. It was absolutely insane. Like that's sick stadium seats, 10,000 fans. Like you're in the outfield, like they've got your your mom's name popped up on their phone like your sister's name just chirping you like they know everything about you but like yeah that was definitely the coolest stadium i played at for sure texas yeah yeah how's the how's the flights you guys fly to some of the games yeah we fly everywhere except asu because they're only an hour away so we'll bust to asu but arizona's weird because like there's only it's us asu and then one other d1 school so like it's not Mm -hmm. like california where you've got like 20 division one programs so like we're only we're only busting in one place. The rest we're flying to. That's tough. Yeah, I bet you some yeah. of those flights get get rowdy in there after a nice little win. Yeah, I mean we don't I we don't fly private until the postseason. So like we're on the, we're on the flights with a bunch of other people. But You're on the little Southwest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Southwest. We get to pick our seats, but I mean, you can definitely tell the vibe based on if we won or lost for sure. It's definitely nice to come out of a road series with a with a win. Yeah, that's hype. That's some good memories you guys are making together yeah. too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, like 100%. just like traveling, like just around the country. I mean, because I remember vaguely from um like U Sports, like AAU, going to like tournaments around the East Coast. Like I don't know, some of those trips are just like the the most fun memories that you can make. But uh, yeah, all right, sure. so, so you've <laughs> always worn thirteen for the most part, right? Is yeah. there any reason behind thirteen? The trace? Yes, <laughs> the trace. Um. I mean, I T Casa thirteen on Instagram. It's always been my number. But shout uh, out, shout out, yeah. Hit me up with a follow. But uh, it goes. I think it goes back to like eight U travel baseball. My dad wore thirteen because of Dan Marino, and I was a big uh, Alex Rodriguez fan growing up, and he was number thirteen. So I think I like the first time I got to pick my number. My dad was like, I was number thirteen, and I was like, so is A Rod. Like, so I've been thirteen ever since. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you got, didn't you rock a different number at? Yeah, yeah, at, yeah. So, at, uh, Arizona? yeah, my freshman year, we had a our best player on the team. He was uh, the Tigers' first pick, 20, 2019 draft, um, and he was number thirteen. I mean, he was a junior when I got there, so obviously I wasn't getting thirteen. So I was yeah. twenty five my freshman year, but when he left the next year, I took thirteen. Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, now, last baseball question is, if you didn't pursue baseball at a young age, which sport would you like to have played and taken to the next level? Hockey, 100%. Did you play hockey back in the day? Yeah, I, pl- I played hockey until I committed, but I mean, I'm a huge Caps fan. Hockey is my favorite sport. Yeah, I got a but, Caps little sweater on right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, tough loss today to the Penguins, but... It happens. I mean, you got to get that first out at some point, right? I think hockey is an awesome sport. It's definitely yeah. hockey. Um, I mean, I didn't really play any other sports growing up. I didn't play basketball past like age 10, didn't play football. Um, I mean, I played golf over the last couple of years, but if I could pursue another sport, it would definitely be hockey. Yeah. That's what I always say. Someone asked me that question, I forget who it was, but like a month and a half ago. And I was like, dude, hockey without a doubt. Cause I played football yeah. and basketball in like a little bit of soccer growing up, but I stopped that in middle school, but dude, hockey's just like throwing on the skates. Like something about that is just, it's just very different. And the high school hockey games were nuts at the ice house. I mean, I would have loved to have been in that that environment, actually yeah. playing. I mean, it's 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 different just because all the good guys in hockey are from Canada and Russia and Sweden. So, like, if you're good in the U.S., like, I don't know how good you really are compared to everyone your age, like trying to be in the NHL. So, yeah, it's just easier out for baseball. 
dude and nhl in my opinion has by far the most fun video game you could possibly play yeah 100 percent. i don't i don't play video games um but when i do uh, nhl is the only game yeah i haven't touched my xbox and basically since i got back from break but only the only game i have in there is shell 21 and that's really all you need or shell 20 whichever yeah. one whichever one i have but uh all right uh sports update the nhl like we just said is back caps are two and one to start the season they came up short today against the penguins dude we need capital one because i know you go to a lot of games and i went to a fair share we need capital one arena to start letting in like a little percentage here and there because i'm i miss those games so much yeah yeah i agree dude i mean when i went home for winter break like i'm used to going to a couple games just because i'll be gone for the rest of the spring but no fans in there. We need to get it back. It's, it's yeah. the best. Your dad, he's had season tickets. Or you've had season tickets for a while, right? Yeah, he. my dad had season tickets growing up. And then ever since I was a young kid, we've had season tickets. So, yeah, I grew up going to a lot of games. It was awesome. Is, that, is it just for hockey or does he have them um, for NBA too? And um, Just just for the Caps. Yeah. Just for the that's really all you need. Dude. I mean, you go to a Wizards yeah. game, it's like – 20% filled, 50%. If they're playing the Lakers, maybe 90%. But you go to a Caps game on a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, sold out. Like, it just doesn't yeah. – it does not matter. Yeah. No one no one out here gets it because hockey's not big in California and Arizona. Everyone's big football here. Like, I'm a big Redskins, Redskins fan too. But, like, I feel like hockey's our sport back in D.C. Like, everyone's yeah. a Caps fan. I mean, dude, because we're just that wagon every season. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember a, a time where we didn't go to the playoffs. I mean, that's why, yeah. like like you said, the Redskins, I mean, we go to, I mean, this year was kind of lit because I mean, we went to the playoffs, but the NFC East was kind of trash, but Wizards haven't really done much, but you can always rely on the Caps to at least make it. And if not make it to the, like advance in the playoffs, you know what I mean? Like make it to a couple rounds. It's like our Patriots. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, dude. I mean, I think it's just because we retained, I mean, Ovechkin is like so loyal, dude. He's like the Tim Duncan of the NHL, dude. He's just he's just not leaving. This guy is not yeah. leaving. And I just found out the other day. I mean, shame on me for finding this out late. But we got Zdeno Chara on the one year contract, like tail end of the career. But don't think I forgot that Buddy was ripping a one twenty mile an hour slap shot at some point in his life, dude. Like, yeah, that guy's he's, he's, yeah. he's something, dude. He's he yeah. really is. Now, uh, didn't you go to um, you went to the game when they won the Stanley Cup? I see it behind you with the flag. Yeah, so I got my I got my caps and my Nats flag. So I went to uh, the Stanley Cup when they won in Vegas. Uh, so it was like right after our senior year, like right before graduation. And then yeah. our coaches here at Arizona always say like the only way you can miss practice is if you have a ticket to the World Series. So game seven of the World Series in Houston last year, like my dad got two tickets. My coach was like, you're going like, I mean, you, you can miss practice weights. Like, so I flew out like, the morning of the game got to Houston at like two and then the Nats won the world series and I flew out the next day, like 6 AM. So I could be back for practice, but like, That's so it was right. unreal, dude. Being at both of those games was insane. Yeah. Now, um, like, all right. So for when the caps won and when the Nats won, which stadium was more filled with DC sports fans? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I'd say the caps just because they were playing Vegas, who was a first year team. Yeah. So like, sort of like not a fake fan base but like i mean they didn't really know what they were watching then you go into houston i mean the astros were still are an unbelievable team so i, I mean there was no nats fans in houston but i'd say like once the cup ceremony happened and the caps were skating around with the cup there was a like 10 rows deep around the ice of caps fans it was pretty packed that's hype dude i'll yeah. never forget when, when he raised the cup i was outside i went with like 10 of my friends and we were watching outside the stadium from capital yeah. one arena yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's like twenty thousand people in there watching a game that's not even being played there and then there was like thirty thousand outside and you know like when he hoisted the cup everyone just lost their mind i mean dude, that's just, yeah i mean i have i have chills like every time i if i rewatch the video i get chills like in the moment like for some reason i was jealous like Everyone was in D.C. celebrating, you know, and I was at the game, but it would have been cool if they won in D.C. Oh, it would have been but, ridiculous. Yeah, bro. yeah. It literally would have been I mean, insane if they had won. You can't, you can't complain. Yeah, no, not at all. Especially when, yeah, like you said, when you're winning a, a, a championship. Just something about when the when the Nationals won, like, I just, I don't want to say like I knew it, but like when they beat, what was it, the Dodgers? In like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. on one sure. of the rounds, yeah. I was like, bro, this team just seems like a team of destiny. It just seems like it, this is they're just meant to win this season. And then flash forward, beat the Astros. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're doing it right now. I mean, then they they missed the playoffs last season or this past season. But I mean, I'm not a huge like I don't really keep up unless it's the playoffs. Like, like what's your outlook on the season coming up? 
Um, I mean, they've got a great pitching staff they have for the last five, ten years. Um, I mean, I feel like even when we won the World Series, our pitching was way better than our hitting just because the loss of Harper – um, but, and then now losing Rendon. So our, our lineup's definitely more desolated. You know, we let go of Adam Eaton too. So, I mean, our lineup won't be great, but we signed Kyle Schwarber from the Cubs and then Josh Bell from the Pirates. So, I mean, I think they can make a run. I don't, I don't think they're a World Series team, but like, I always tell my dad, like, dude, we got two championships in two years. Like, I'm fine. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I was talking to my dad about. I was like, once you win a championship, your city's basically good for like at least 15 years before we start getting chirped again about like not making the playoffs or not advancing the playoffs. I mean, yeah, the caps could not win or the Nats could not win for another 10 years. And I'm satisfied just cause we got to live. And we, I feel like we lived through it at a great time in our life. Like we were still like, like yeah, we're yeah, still yeah. growing up. We're still like, we have that energy. Like not that we won't have energy like 27 years old, but it's just different when you're in high school and college and these, these championships are being won. So I mean, yeah, shout out sure. DC sports. Yeah. I mean, my dad always says like, you didn't have to wait 40 whatever years like I did to, for the Caps or any DC yeah. team to win a championship. But I agree. I mean, I think it would have been a little different if we were 10, 11 years old, but it was pretty sick, like sending this off to college with a championship. Yeah. It is so yeah. hype. And especially because it had been bricks for both teams. I mean, wasn't mm-hmm. that, was that the Capitals first? Yeah. Caps first, Nats first. I think the last time we won was when the Redskins did in the 90s. Yeah. Man, we got, we got some time before the Redskins put together a run in the playoffs. I mean, I, I would like, I mean, I'm optimistic that we can probably win the division next year, just depending on what the other teams in the NFC East, NFC East can do. But I mean, I just think if we can get one more weapon on offense, sheesh, I mean, come on. Like our defense is nasty. I mean, our defense is set. So as far as DC sports go, I'm pretty optimistic, but um, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we need a quarterback though. Hopefully they trade for someone. Yeah. what do you think about Heineke? Would you, you think he's, I you mean, think he's a good starter or what? I mean, I think good for him, like he made a name for himself, but I mean, just DC history, drafting a quarterback hasn't really worked out in our favor. I think, yeah. I think we definitely need to trade for a guy like Matt Stafford or Mariota, but I think, I think Heineke I like make, makes for a great backup. I agree. I, I love yeah. the Stafford um, answer. Stafford, I mean, yeah. that, that guy is without a doubt the most underrated quarterback in the NFL. 100%. I mean, I'm, he's been consistent for his whole career. Yeah, like dude, he has people, no help. Yeah. I mean, he had Calvin Johnson for three years, and then after that, just no run game, no offensive line, no defense. Unless the Lions are scoring 30 points, they're not winning the game because yeah, that's how yeah, many I mean, their you, opposition yeah. is getting. You get a guy like that, you put him with Terry McLaren, Logan Thomas, and then we, we pick up a running back. And then with the front D-line we have, like, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a legit team. I, I think it's, it's crucial that we retain as much as the um, as much of the defensive line as we possibly can because I mean those guys yeah. are still young so we still have them on like rookie contracts but Jonathan Allen he, his contract's coming up soon um, the Aaron Payne I don't know when his is up but it's got to be in the next year or two so we'll see but yeah I, I agree I mean I think a quarterback maybe start with Heineke I mean I wouldn't be opposed to seeing how he does but it's just you can't you can't really base it off one game you know what I mean so yeah I like I like the Matt Stafford answer. Okay, what is your prediction for the Super Bowl this season? So we got Bills Chiefs is going to be the AFC Championship, and then Packers is are hosting either the Bucks or the Saints, whoever comes out of that game. We'll start with the Bucks Saints just real quick. Who do you think is winning that game that may have already started? It starts in four minutes, actually. Um, so. I don't know. I mean, I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I I don't like Aaron Rodgers, so uh-huh. I hope the Bucks come out of it. I like the like the Belichick Brady argument. I think if he goes to the Super Bowl, the argument's over. I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can argue it's. I mean, obviously Belichick had a lot to do with it, but I mean, if Brady goes to the Super Bowl, with the Buccaneers who haven't done anything for the last decade, like I mean, you got to argue he was seventy five percent of the Patriots' success. But I don't know. I mean, the Saints are a good team. I think they go in the Super Bowl. Um, I'm gonna go with the Bucks there, and then Bucks Packers will be a good matchup. And then on the other side, my girlfriend's from Kansas City, so she'd be mad if I. I said oh, if you the Bills are going to win, but I mean, I think if Mahomes is back in, they can definitely win the Super Bowl. So yeah, I'll go. With the, I'll go with the Chiefs, and then if they don't get Mahomes back next week, I mean, Rogers, he looks like a god right now. So you got to go with the Packers. Yeah, and Devontae Adams. I, I just, I mean, they're great. They're a great team as is. But I couldn't imagine adding J.J. Watt, who wants out of Houston. Like he, I, I was watching the Pat McAfee uh, podcast the other day, and he said that J.J. Watt has property in Wisconsin already, so he already has ties to Green Bay. I would love to see J.J. Watt go to Green Bay, or if not, get him another weapon like Julio Jones, because his contract's <clears throat> yeah. up. Like 
I just couldn't imagine how much better they'd be if they actually had more weapons. But like you said, they're a great team as is. Devontae Adams is that dude. I need to, I don't want the Bucks to win. I need the Bucks to win for the sake of my parlay. I mean, we got we got the we got the parlay riding on this. So go Bucks, dude. I'm a big yeah. Bucks fan right now. 100%. Massive. So uh yeah, I don't know. That that game next week, Bills, Chiefs, that's gonna be a shootout. It, like you said, it just really comes down to if Mahomes plays. If Mahomes doesn't play, I don't know if Chad Henney's gonna be that that savior, but uh I think I think Mahomes will suit up. I mean, a concussion. Yeah. I mean, when you're in the playoffs, like I feel like you can't really heal a concussion any faster than you normally would be able to. But when you're chasing that back to back ring, that, that headache will be gone when you're, when you have two rings on your fingers. So. I agree. It's interesting. Cause I feel like if he had like a, an injury elsewhere, you can kind of mask it and play through it. But like ever they're so strict about concussions. So like, I, I mean, it'll just be interesting to see if he, if they prevent him from playing, which could happen. You don't know how, yeah. don't know how severe it is, but. Exactly. It did look like a kind of it looked like a weird hit. Like I didn't see it live, but because I was I in the bathroom, I didn't even I, see it. Yet. Yeah, it's weird. He gets like wrapped up and like thrown down. Um, dude, what about uh? Did you watch the game last night with the Ravens? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Freaking Lamar Jackson just throwing touchdowns for the other team, dude. I don't know. He just stared the receiver down the entire play. Yeah, I wanted to see. I mean, McSorley's hurt, but I think I think they would have won if he came in. I feel like that dude's just a winner. He is, dude. I mean, yeah. I, I love Chase McSorley. I remember watching him in high school back in the day because my cousin, uh, he always took me to the Briar Woods games, and I went to like the state championship when they played. And it's just like it's electric watching this guy like progress through his career. So, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So we got good games next week. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped for him. But now we'll get into some random questions that I got for you. Um, like I said, I see some of your stories. Kids always dog and food left and right. What are your top three restaurants that you've been to in your life? And you can say where they are if they're like specific in a like they're only in one state or something. That's a good question. Um, Thank you. Off the top of my head, I'd go. I just went to Vegas for my 21st birthday. So I'd go Same. Carbone. It's in Las Vegas on the Strip in the Aria Hotel, Italian restaurant. Uh, probably the best place I've ever been. So I'd, I'd probably put that at one. And then. I mean, just from traveling so much, like growing up in high school with baseball and then like now playing in college, I'd probably say Hal's Steakhouse. It's in Buckhead, Atlanta, in Georgia. Um, I love steak. So like whenever I was growing up, my dad would try to take me to the best steakhouse wherever we were. So yeah, I'd go Hal's Steakhouse. If you're ever in Georgia, Atlanta area, you definitely need to hit it up. It's a not a chain restaurant. It's like a little dive place, but I'd go that at two and then... At three, it's tough. I don't know. I mean, D.C.'s got some good food downtown. Um, I've been to some good places in Southern California. I'd probably have to go with uh, this barbecue place I went to when we were playing Texas last year in Austin just because they're known for their barbecue. There was like a two-hour wait to get your food. It was, it was insane. Barbecue down south is silly, dude. It's honestly yeah, those ridiculous. Are my, those are my three places, though. Nice. Um, have you ever been to the Prime steakhouse in in vegas and the like under the bellagio or it's like in the bellagio but it's like outside no that's where i went when i was in vegas a couple months ago and that that would probably be my number one i mean i didn't really eat at many restaurants when i was out there but if i ever go back i'm gonna have to try the one you did but yeah there's something about steakhouses i mean you're spending a you're spending a dollar but uh but it's worth it i feel like like treating yourself to like a great meal when you're on vacation or just in general is uh is essential yeah vegas vegas is good food I mean, it's it's known for the gambling, but like, yeah, they've got some legit restaurants for sure. You do any gambling when you were there? Uh, I mean, we played our fair share of blackjack. Was, Dude, I've been ripping funny. blackjack on my phone. <laughs> I've been spending too much time on playing blackjack on my phone because I went there. I just did. I did a little bit of blackjack, blackjack, and then I did craps and roulette. But going back, like whenever I go back, I hammer down on the blackjack table. I mean, yeah, I'm going big on that. So I'm definitely a, definitely a blackjack guy. I think roulette's a lot of luck. I think there's a little strategy with blackjack. Yeah. So definitely like blackjack, but uh, I got to tame it down before the season starts. So yeah, for sure. I feel like it's one of those things that uh, you just got to play a lot of like the free apps on the app store. Cause like when I went there, I kind of just went there blindly and like I had played with my friends and stuff, but yeah. since I went on the trip, I've been ripping the app store. So I'm a little more prepared when I go back. Hopefully it works out a little bit better, but, uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Two vacation spots. Hit me with two vacation spots that you've been, whether it's in the U S or outside the U S and then follow up question two that you've never been to that you would like to also in or outside the U S I'd go first. I'd go, uh, 
Italy. I went to Italy my senior year of high school. Um, I think Italy's sick. Um, yeah. We went to Florence and the Amalfi Coast. So I'd go Italy at number one. I'd love to go back there once I'm done playing or after college. Um, number two, I'd probably go to Newport Beach, California. I love Southern California, all the beaches there. Yeah. Um, so those would be my two top vacation spots. Um, and then somewhere I haven't been that I'd like to go. Um, probably just like a like a tropical island, like Bora Bora or something crazy like that, <laughs> just to like see what that's like. Yeah. You ever mess around with like surfing when you go on vacation? No, nah, I've never been surfing. Neither have I, but I want to try. Yeah. my ro- One of my roommates is from Hawaii, so okay, get, it's like big time surf surf area but i've never been surfing now yeah you ever um like you snowboard a lot or ski or anything like that uh i mean my mom grew up in colorado so she snowboarded growing up so i went a decent amount of times in high school but i mean i just my dad didn't want me to get hurt just with baseball so Makes sense. i never I, I mean i haven't snowboarded in probably eight years yeah no i'm trash at snowboarding i went went a couple <laughs> weeks ago but he's not good I, I ripped the skis but um yeah snowboarding i've been before it's just it's not really my thing but I don't know if that would translate to surfing at all, but I need to try it at least once. We'll, we'll rip the bunny slopes once I'm done playing. Me and you, we can go in the flat ground. That's what we need, dude. We need to build up our confidence before we get out there. You go to the Black Diamond, it's just like a straight shot down. It's like, yeah. man, I'm not nah, stopping yeah, if yeah, I I'm, do that. Like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pass on that. I feel like also you need to go to a place, because I went to Wisp uh, in Deep Creek. Like If I was to try like a Black Diamond, I would want to go to a place like Vail or something where it's like fresh snow where I know I'm not, it's not like icy a straight shot and I'm dying in Virginia yeah. or something like that. Like if I'm going to yeah, go down, I, mean, I might as well go down in Colorado or something. Yeah. My ACL might blow up, but I'll, I'll, I'll live. Yeah, exactly. Dude. I mean, <laughs> I guess, I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. Last thing that I have is, I mean, it was, it was going to be the, the supersized meatballs from Wegmans, but damn, I mean, we started with that. Like I said, shout out to me, uh, classic. You guys didn't, you guys went on vacation not too long ago, right? With Kevin. Yeah, we went to Florida. Um, I have a place there, so like I mean, me, me, just one of my boys, so we grew up going there, and uh, yeah, we went over winter break. I brought my girlfriend, and then Kevin, a couple of other boys, Cam Audi. We all went down to Florida, so it was Kevin's a, a legend, dude. Yeah, he's he's the goat. I love that kid. Kevin is he's iconic. He's actually one of the funniest kids. Uh, yeah, I need to see. Him. I mean, we talk a little bit over Snapchat and stuff, but I haven't seen him in probably a couple months. But uh, he's just he's a great guy to be around. Big yeah, jokes, big mooch, baby. Big mooch, huge mooch. <laughs> I wonder where he's going to school. You know where he's going to school yet? Because uh, yeah, he's either he's going to JMU or Tech or UVA. But uh, I think he's just waiting for COVID to die down, and then he's going to go to one of those schools. Dude, I would love to see him at, at Tech because I'm always like hanging out at Tech because uh, you know Radford's like right there. But he came yeah. down. He visited me. I think he's visited me three times at Radford or twice at Radford, and we've just had some legendary times. I mean, yeah. I couldn't imagine being 30 minutes away from that kid every day during the school year. But uh, yeah. all right, before we wrap up. What is one piece of, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I usually ask my guests this. What's one piece of advice that you'd give to everyone watching or listening? And it could be any facet of, it could be at, through athletics or it could just be general life advice. Um, I'd go with athletics, just have fun. Um, just sports at the end of the day. I think in college you realize that it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. Uh, life probably just hit on like what we're going through now with COVID. Um, I mean, we're having to follow some, parameters and take responsibility for some things just with COVID going on like we're not going out right now like I'm not even able to see my girlfriend just because you know she's doing her thing but I can't give the team COVID but I think just in regard to that like I mean there's a there's a lot of other real problems you know people out there fighting for their lives in the hospitals uh, people overseas you know fighting for our freedom those are real problems I think with COVID it's obviously it's it's a deal um but at the end of the day like there's other things out there that are that are real so just take uh accountability follow the the protocols uh, i know for me i mean it, it stinks not being able to you know do college things but you know we have a responsibility that we have to take ownership for just playing here so we're not really able to go out right now and see people outside of our team but if you put it into perspective like i said like there's there's people out there that are going through real things so yeah that's, that's a good outlook have. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Now, how many times, uh, it's kind of random, but how many times do they test you when you're back at school? Twice a week. Damn. Yeah, so there's they're no, try, there's no top way. Of you guys. Yeah, there's no way around it. Um, we've had a couple of positive cases in the last two days. I think we've got like six guys out right now. But, I mean, 
we're getting tested twice a week. If we have a couple more this week, we're probably going to be shut down for a couple of weeks, which would not be good. So it's just, it's the severity of it. It's not, yeah. it's not ideal, but like, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. When do you head back to school? I'm here. Oh, you're for some reason. I don't know why. For some reason, I thought you were back here in Nova. No, I bring, I bring my DC uh, memorabilia here, but yeah, I've, I've been here for like three weeks. Yeah, Dang. we're, we're, we're in the swing of things because our season starts in three weeks. So love to hear it back at it for a while. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I head back tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Dope. Now I'm just now noticing this. I'm seeing in the background, that's a fair amount of shoes back there. Now, what is, uh, you always been collecting shoes or like, yeah, tell us about yeah. that. I love shoes, dude. It's, it's bad. It's not good. Uh -huh. It's definitely, I mean, I love it. It's a hobby. I collect shoes, but I mean, I have, I mean, I have like a good amount yeah, of shoes in my rack right here. Now, but. You can you grab like one or two that you like the most? I mean, you don't have to, but like which ones yeah, my, are your favorite? My favorite shoes. Um, I'd go. Mm, the top shelf. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put the the goods on the top shelf. I'd probably go. This I'm a big Jordan guy, shoes. so I got I've got these uh these mid ones, the Milans. They're pretty dope. Yeah, those are I fresh. Like these, yeah, they don't really go with a lot of stuff, but when I can wear them, I do. And then these threes right here, they're like the Air Max three collaboration, so they're pretty sick. And like the those Nike, fresh. the Nike logo rips off. You can put different uh, swoosh logos on. And I probably go with the UNCs. These are pretty. That those are fresh. Those are definitely yeah. my favorite of the three that you showed. Yeah, I like these. I, I wear love Jordans those. a lot, but yeah. Now, have you ever camped out for a pair of shoes? Like, have you ever gone like above and beyond to get one? Nah, I've actually never, I've probably bought like two pairs of shoes in person. I just, I get them off StockX just to make sure they're real. Yeah. But no, nah, I mean, I'm not, I don't like camp out for shoes, but like, I'm definitely, I keep up with them and see when they release and stuff. But now nah, I get all my shoes online. Yeah. You always had those couple kids in high school and middle school that were just like so passionate about shoes. And now like you can make a, a lot of money. I mean, if you hold on to them, yeah. like my man Damon has a, um, He's got Yeezys or uh, the the Red Octobers, and he got them like way back in the day, and they're like completely untouched. And I was like, dude, like I just can't imagine what that will be worth in like 2035. Like, if you just hold on to them and never take them out the box, yeah, I, mean, a I lot didn't of money right there. I didn't really like Jordans in high school. Like, I mean, I don't know if I'd say I was a sneakerhead, but like I was just rocking those those KDs and the Finets, like the the look everyone looked like the, the high elite socks. But With like, the elite socks, I was just about to yeah, say. Yeah. Once I got to college, though, like I love Jordans now, but I, I've actually never sold a pair of shoes in my life. Like I have a bunch at home. Like I keep all my shoes, but yeah, I mean, in a couple of years, they might be worth a lot. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. They they just appreciate. Yeah, I feel like if if they're taken care of, they just appreciate over time. For sure. So. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, make sure to follow Tyler on Instagram at tcasa13. Uh, you got any final closing statements or shout outs you want to give to anyone? It's good to talk to you. I haven't seen you in a while. I know, dude. It was. This is a good conversation. I feel like it went by fast. But yeah. uh, I mean, if you ever want to rip one again in the future, I mean, this one hundred percent. Hopefully, hopefully, we win a national championship this year. We can rip one after. Yeah, be that'd be something, dude. I'll definitely be keeping yeah. up with your games. When is your um? When's your first? February nineteenth. Yeah, so that's we're, coming up. Yeah, we're preseason tenth in the country, so we got a good Damn. shot at winning the Natty. Yeah. Dude, let's go. And you got uh, a lot of seniors on the team or like some young bucks or how's that going? So with baseball, like once you, the way the draft works, like obviously basketball, you can go one and done. And then I don't know what the football rules are, but for baseball, you have to go to college for three years. So usually once you're a junior, like most of our guys get drafted. So we don't really have that many seniors on our team, but we've got a good core just because last year with COVID, a lot of our guys came back, but I mean, we've got a good freshman class. I think they're like fourth in the country for the newcomers out of anyone in the country. Um, That's hype. And then my class is is legit. And then we've got a couple guys a grade older than me that that came back this year. So we're gonna be solid. But like, it's not like football where you got like the the one and two seed Alabama Clemson. Like yeah. the ten seed's not gonna beat them. In baseball, like there's not that big of a difference between yeah one and ten. So. Do you go to a lot of other sporting events at Arizona? Like, do you go to the football games, the basketball games? Because I know your basketball team was damn good a couple years ago when you had, like, DeAndre mm -hmm. Ayton, who went yeah. number one, actually. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're not like – it's – like, when I went to Clemson, it was sick just because of the football. But yeah. we're not that big of a football school. But, like, 
last year we had Nico Mannion, Josh Green, and Zeke Naji. They were all two of them were first rounders, and then Nico Mannion was a second rounder. The uh, like the little ginger kid. Yeah, yeah, I know that kid. But yeah, yeah, the ugly little he guy, looks, but he, he, he can like shoot he... though. <laughs> a bit, a bit. There you go. Um, he had to sneak that our, one in there. <laughs> our basketball, our basketball is our football. So like our basketball games are sick. So I, I go to a lot of basketball games, but obviously we're not allowed to go right now. True. Yeah, yeah. it's something about going to like a massive school because like. I I get it kind of from tech just because I go to like a lot, like almost all their football games and some of their basketball games and stuff. But like, I don't know, just something about going to a big school where sports are like a huge part of the reputation of the school just seems sick. Yeah. hundred percent. Seems real legendary. So, um, yeah, man, like you said, it was a great time to talk with you, dude. Definitely got to keep in touch. And this was last minute. I mean, for, for those of you that don't know that are listening and watching, I literally hit up Tyler like two hours ago and I was like, yo dude, I was like, you free to do a podcast soon. And, um, I was wondering if you if we would do it in a couple of days, but then we said we were free tonight, and um, we still have time to rip the Bucks game, Bucks Saints. So, yeah, it was fun, dude. It was good talking to you. I appreciate you having me. Of course, man. Anytime. You're always welcome. Um, but yeah, guys, today was Sunday, January seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-one. This was episode forty-three. Uh, Tyler's Instagram will be below in the description. My social medias will be be below in the description. All the listening platforms below that. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Well, that's all I got today, or that's all I got to say today. Tyler, you got any final words? Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll try to we'll try to rekindle that meatball video, put it yeah. out on your uh, your next episode. But other than that, thanks for having me. Of course, good man. seeing you, brother. Yeah. All right, guys, stay clean, stay safe, stay tuned for next week. Let's go. All right, see you, Mike.